Right, what up YouTube? I hope you're all doing very well. Now, in this episode, we're going to be doing a little bit of nightly sort of tech support here. And inside this box is the Dynabook Satellite Pro, the ET10-G105. The box is a little bit worn here because there was some details on it. Uh, that's not how they normally come, but obviously I've had to remove that sticker, but that's not the reason why you called. Basically put, we have one of these. Now what this is, it's in short, when we open the box, we have what looks like a, um, a mini netbook. Well, it is, but it also doubles as a tablet. Now, Dynabook used to be Toshiba, and Toshiba, in their heyday, were fairly all right. But they've since rebranded and... Um, They've gone under the name of Dynabook for some <laughs> benounced reason, but they've kept the Satellite Pro. Now, I picked this up for all of £50. I was with Jamie when I did that, so huge shout out to Jamie. Um, I'll try and link at some point in the future his photography channel because he's a professional photographer um, and a, a marvellous guy but anyway again that's not the reason why you called so in the box you get a 12 volt charger now 12 volts is interesting because that means it'll work uh, on batteries as well so you could hook this up to sort of your um, cigarette lighter in a car or run it indeed off of batteries if you have the connector so we'll just pull the unit out and get rid of the box because we won't need that and as you see here there's our interfaces there what it'll accept so it'll take a micro SD card the 12 volt damn camera you probably won't be able to see that very well, but it's just a standard kind of mini one of those, those kind of affairs, Cofono connection. And this lighting's bad. Then you have a USB slot on there, a micro HDMI output, which is interesting. So I could plug this in theoretically into a display unit or a TV or some other kind of affair like that. Then there's a another sort of what looks like type C USB slot, an earphone jack and there is a small slot for a microphone. So let's go ahead and open this thing up and Let's go ahead and power it on. And it's going to take a while, I think, on this one. But there is a button here. Oh, there we go. We're sort of running. And I will come back to this rather annoying Windows screen in a moment. Because for some reason... Um, Windows, when it's loading up, it loads it sideways. And yes, the screen does rotate. Now, what's interesting about this is a button here in the middle that we can press this. Let's move the camera down somewhat. I have no idea how I'm going to manage to do this without a third pair of hands, but that's it. Push that button down and the keyboard separates, 
which now means we have a tablet. Right? All rosy there. And I can go ahead and log in. Hacker being the optimum name for me, I suppose. And we're logged in. Right. Now, this one is 64 gig of memory on here. Now, drawbacks is that you can't natively get Linux to run on it. I've tried. But there is, however, a way that you can by doing something called a VM or a virtual machine. So I'll go ahead and open that because I've managed to get Kali Linux to run on it, which is interesting. So that opens up and we can just go up to start and start the virtual machine. Uh, no, I don't want to discard that. Don't you dare. Bear with me. So we've started the virtual machine on this and it does take a, a little bit of time to load up. But when it does, it runs it quite well. There we are, so it's restoring our virtual machine from where we left off. Ignore the whole 2 minutes and 30 seconds there that it says it takes. Because it's done. And we are now running an operating system within an operating system. So it does actually run it. Now... The downsides, as we said, are drivers on this, but I've been able to find them and I will leave the links in the description bar below to the FTP site where you can get them. So, in short, sub £100, it isn't too bad. The downside with running Kali Linux, though, in VM the touch screen, although it does work, on the VM you can't actually use the keyboard as such on it, which is kind of unfortunate. There may well be a fix that I release for this at some point in the future. But generally speaking, no, when I'm in the command window there, I am actually forced to have to use the keyboard itself. So exit, and we're back out. So, as we said, the drivers are in the low bar to the FTP site and the username and password for that site is there as well. But on the whole, yeah, it's portable and what I do like about this, aside of it being 12 volt and the battery life lasts remarkably well, I can also do this which is pretty cool. You can stick a bum bag across my chest like so. I don't know if you'll be able to see it because I'm all in black, which is a typical of me. There we go. Close that down. And I know it does zip up because I had it with me earlier on. There we are. 
So it all fits in now. I can also get keyboard and everything else I might need in with me. I keep putting this damn e-sig down. Keep putting the down e-sig down. That made a lot of sense, didn't it? But like we said, the drawback with this though, as I found out, is if you install a clean copy of Windows on it and you wipe everything, well, surprise, surprise, it'll knock out all of your drivers and then nothing works on it. But in the screen in the background there, we have Dynabook's FTP site. It's all going to be linked. And hopefully, if you own one of these units, that might sort your problem out. Now, downside of that one, I can't guarantee how long that FTP site is going to be up for. Theoretically, Dynabook could come along and shut it down at any point, which is why I've taken the liberty to get backup drivers ready. So just in case they send the whole thing offline for some unbeknownst reason. But yeah, for sub £100, well I paid 50 for it, it isn't too bad. Does it go upside down? It sure does. So... It's 64 gig of storage with 4 gig RAM on this one, and as we said, there's a micro SD slot, which is rather fragile. I've nearly broken that off. It's quite fragile, but there's the micro SD slot there. So yes, you can also expand, oh god that is fragile, you can expand its internal storage somewhat. So for sub £100, if you want a lot of messing about and a lot of hacking to do, get one. It took two days for me to get this up and running properly. But if that's not your thing, then maybe I would say stay away from it. But on the whole though, let's get that charger wherever I put that guy. Wherever I put that one minute. Ouch, I was sat on it. Put that in the bag as well. Yeah, sub £100, that's not too bad, and I've still got plenty of room in there as well for flash drive I have with extendable USB, that can go in there with it, because that has the drivers on it, that's needed. And that can stay in there in that little baggie which I can even wear around my waist or as I normally do across the chest. So there we are that's just a, a quick little review for you and it's mostly about the tech support. So if you own one of these Dynabook uh, 10G 105s I think it was, it's on the box, E10G105, I guess now you can get your drivers for it. So until the next one, stay good, and yeah, I guess I'll see you in the next one.